of gig and universities, all of a sudden you realize you're kind of on your own. Whereas here, you do really have that personal type of being able to speak to your lecturers and get that information that you need. I think as well, what I found at Westminster compared to maybe some of my friends who went to different universities is actually those lab hours. And on the one hand, it might mean that it makes you realize this isn't for you. On the other hand, like me, if you decide that actually you really enjoy the practical aspect, it just means that you go into that sort of like master's applications with so much experience and it makes your application so much stronger having those skills already and having proof that you know what you're doing and you've had guidance and experience and all these different processes and techniques. And I think that is something that's so valuable in terms of whether you do or don't want to end up doing it. Having that experience is essential. takeaways from I guess speaking to my friends speaking to a lot of students is even people who think they know what they want to do don't know until you try it so it's all trial and error and sometimes it'll work out sometimes it won't work out and just don't feel sort of overwhelmed if it's not what you envisaged it being don't feel like you're trapped in pursuing a certain route if you're not actually enjoying it you can always change you can always do something different like you're not absolutely trapped in you know following a certain route even if you say do a master because you really think you want to go into a certain field and then after the master you think to yourself actually this really isn't for me that's okay you've still got a lot of skills that you've taken away from that experience and that's the main thing it's all going to be trial and error and with every experience it's going to be one step closer to figuring out what exactly you do want to do the things that you're passionate about and the things that you love as a means to guide you to your path. I'd say you don't have to always do things the sort of standard way of doing it. There is not a one route or policy to get to a certain pathway. I agree with what everyone is saying in terms of, say maybe you're interested in a specific position. Have a look at the qualities needed to get that role and maybe start off with just trying to build on one of them. It's really sort of kind of like a stepping stone where we're continuously sort of learning about ourselves and sort of challenging ourselves to be the best version so I think keep your mind open and just kind of follow your passions because in the end direct you into the right location and also the course itself is so diverse there is so many different routes that you can take with this course just I guess sitting here we're all in sort of different industries but we all started off kind of in the same place not really knowing where it was we were going I guess that kind of shows you Yeah, I think having an open mind is really important. I think sometimes maybe that dream job of yours is not even something you've ever even thought about. You might not even know that job exists until you have that open mind and look at everything in the sort of general field. But I also think applying for jobs that you're not even interested in is not worth it. I don't think it's advisable to just blanket apply using the same CV to, you know, 40 jobs because you're just going to get rejections and that's going to make you feel worse about your application processes. So I think find quite a few jobs that you can apply for being open-minded but also take the time to really read the job description really take the time to see if this is something you would enjoy and then go to your CV and think how could I cater this the same experience to sound more lined up with this job description rather than this one because little things like that will stand out might have it and it might go away that would be very nice obviously but it might be something that you deal with for a long time and you just have to keep thinking in your head like every time you achieve something add that to like a sort of a little list in your head where you say actually I've done this I've done this I've done this and I do belong here and if you're just starting out as well and you're just talking about getting hired into your first job post university they picked you for a reason right you're not there by mistake so they've looked at that CV and if they've had 200 people apply and you got it it's not a fluke I 
think I would probably put myself in that boat, being a little bit introverted. I think I'm lucky to work in a sort of environment where the majority of people in my career field kind of feel the same way. So networking specifically, it is very important. But I think when you're told of the importance of it, you have a tendency to overthink about it. And ultimately, these are still people. And it's very easy to think in the business world of making relationships purely transactional. I think it would be beneficial maybe if you go to relevant conferences as part of your career to try and put yourself out there to speak to as many people as you can. And it doesn't even have to be about work. You know, you can just try and maybe make a friend, request them on LinkedIn. And I think that the biggest part of that is that you never know when that person could potentially become relevant again in your career.